used to be an adventurer like you. And I took an arrow in the knee. Hi guys, how you doing? This is Maximum X Gamer bringing you a video, my first one in 2012. Okay, so this video is meant as a guide. Uh, it's there purely to point out some of the things that wasn't very obvious when I first started playing. So for the purposes of this guide, I am referencing the PS3 controller. By pressing the circle button on the PS3, it will take you to a menu which gives you four options skills items map and the magic the um, items menu takes you to a list of things available to you now the most important thing on that list is the favorites you can assign anything um, from your basic clothing weapons amulets magic dragon shouts to the favorites list once you've assigned items to your favorites list you can access it by pressing the up arrow key on your left hand pad of the PSD controller this works as your quick shortcut to the favorites list where you can assign and deselect anything now the basic principle behind the favorites list is so that you can assign any item that you've placed in the favorites um, to either your left hand or your right hand so if you've got a shield on your left you can assign a dagger to your right or a short sword to your right um, here's an example of how you can equip uh, by pressing the trigger uh, the L1 button and the R1 button on the PS3 controller to assign a magic to either hand so the more powerful you become the more you upgrade the more you can dual cast so uh, I'll show you an example of dual cast also you can assign a dragon shout to the favorites and again I'll show you the ice shout so you can equip fire to your left and right and dual cast or you can have fire on one and ice on the other so you can mix and match Okay, so another example of this is where you can equip a shield in one hand and still have the fire or magic in the other. Need me some scuba. Picking pockets. Hoarded stuff. Now that's Just the one real last time. No rough stuff. Just take it and go. Okay, so here's your first tip. Any companions that join you during your quests, you can use them as mules. Basically, go into the options dialog and choose the option which covers the trading aspect. Uh, this gives you access to the stuff that they're carrying. So then you can scroll down and choose the items you have, and you can then pass them over. The option comes up where you can store them or give them to your companion. So this doubles the capacity you're able to carry. So as long as your family doesn't get killed, you can retrieve your items at any time. Let's get going. Okay, so the second tip is how to add locations to your main quest maps. One of the first places I found where you could do this was at Dragon Reach, one of the first locations you go to. Now, in the throne room, inside the main castle, to the left hand side, there is the staircase which leads up to what can be described as the war room and uh, there's a large table on which there's a map by clicking on the flags on the map you automatically update your main map the locations on the map are all the forts on either side of the warring parties by clicking on each one of these flags your main quest map updates and shows you all the forts you can't fast travel to them but it's well worth having the intel so the next tip is to do with the thieves quest now in order to complete the quest you need to return something called the skeleton key now what I found was that you don't have to do this now it means that you can't fully complete the actual story 
related to the Thieves Guild. However, if you want to increase your lock pick uh, skill uh, to 100, you can use the skeleton key and just go around opening stuff. It won't break. It's a bit like the previous um, Oblivion, where once you've completed the whole Thieves Guild quest, you was given uh, a skeleton key. But in the previous game, you was able to keep it. This one, you have to return it. So before you return it, just go around opening all the locks as many as possible until your skill set goes to 100, and then you can complete the quest. Here's a quick example of me forcing the lock and any other lockpick would have broken five six times and in this case it stays strong it doesn't break and your lockpick skill increases now my final tip is to do with training and retrieving the money that you spend on training so basically you've got to be an expert at pickpocketing uh, also it helps to be advanced in sneak so the concept is you ask any trainer mm -hmm. to train you and you can train five times during the level it's now, depending on your skill set I'll show you pickpocketing and your sneak you can retrieve uh, up to about a thousand gold back any t at any one time so here I've asked this we done blacksmith to train me two times and he's taken something like 500 from me I'm going to sneak mode where I can pickpocket him because my skill is high I'm able to pickpocket the five six hundred back straight away and then repeat the process uh, at least five times before you level up just before I go I thought I'll show you quickly the upgrade screen for the skills and basically there's so many options here and every time you level up you have a choice of upgrading your magic your stamina or your health and then that then leads through to any skill sets and you can assign certain things to your skill sets i hope you enjoyed this video and hopefully learned something please give us a thumbs up any positive comments is always appreciated and subscribe this is Maximum X Gamer signing out. Catch you next time. No lollygagging.